first off, I just want to give you the chance to take a minute to introduce yourself for those who may not be familiar with you. Okay, well, thank you for having me, John. Uh, my name is State Representative Sue Shear, and I'm currently the state rep for the 96th district, which is Springfield. Well, half of Springfield, the east side and the central park up to, up to Washington Park and then all the way through the little town south of 72 and then including Decatur. And so my big question about this, I mean, you're the incumbent coming into this race. Why are you the right woman to continue doing this job? There's still so much that needs to be done for our district. Um, our district really has come a long ways. I'm a retired teacher, actually. I, I taught public school for 35 years, and we've come a long way, but there's so much more still to be done. I, I truly do care about the people, and that's why I'm doing this job. I, I listen to them. I knock on doors all the time to hear what um, people's concerns are. I feel like I'm honest with them. We don't always agree on things, but I try to tell them the truth, and and try to always represent the majority of my district. And you know what? I vote for all the people, not just Democrats, not just Republicans, but I vote for the interests of everyone. And now with your track history, what are some of the things that you're proud of that you've served so far? And then what do you plan on doing going forward if you're reelected? Well, uh, I have a very long, long list of accomplishments but it would take the whole interview and I'm not really one to go toot my horn all the time, but um, I think that one of, one of the most significant things is the money that I've worked tirelessly to try to save the money that, uh, that our taxpayers, one of my first bills ever was my highway sign bill and we were paying $10 million to monitor highway signs. And I worked very hard, but we got that bill passed, and that's $10 million. We also uh, grounded the state planes and the cars that weren't being used. That was a huge waste of money. Um, I, I am the chairman of the Ed Licensing Committee. I've worked tirelessly to help make schools a better place, always worrying about the children, uh, working on the teacher shortage. I voted for the Capitol bill. That has helped tremendously improve our roads, our bridges. The high-speed rail was part of that vote. Different uh, votes I've taken to help spur economic development. I've brought money to help our, uh, our low income, our libraries, uh, fiber network work. Uh, that's another huge savings people don't even realize. Some schools, like Decatur Public School, are paying millions of dollars to companies to provide Wi-Fi because they don't have their own fiber network. And so, um, you know, that's like a good roof. You've got to have it to save money. And so that's something that I've talked to the leaders about and convinced them of the value of that. So then you talked about going into the future. Um, things that I plan to do going into the future, first and foremost is I'm constantly looking and studying, uh, asking questions about the budget, trying to figure out ways that I can be frugal with the money that uh, our taxpayers pay in. I've had a, a big battle with DCFS, you might recall. Actually, your station helped me launch that in the beginning. Over 100 children have died in the last year through DCFS. That is absolutely unacceptable. So this is uh, something that I just won't give up on. We are outsourcing some of our home visitors and it's just not working. I passed a bill uh, after we, I, I sat in on their committee and then we had a huge public hearing that went on for hours, was even carried live on some TV stations. And out of that came a marvelous, very comprehensive bill, but it was a long, hard battle but we have really made some serious improvements and there's still such a long, long way to go. So going into the future, uh, my constituents know that I will vote with them and I'll keep knocking on doors to find out what do the people want. Awesome. Well, we're right at five minutes right now, but oh my gosh. <laughs> it does go quickly. No, it goes quickly, but I did want to give you the chance to 
to kind of make a closing statement um, and things like that. And we, we just try to get one extra little chunk at the end as well. Okay. So if, if you'd like to, you know, what would your closing statement be to voters about why you should be reelected? I would really appreciate the opportunity to serve the people of my district uh, for two more years. With this COVID, things are, are very difficult. It's very hard. We've hired lots of extra staff to help with their unemployment concerns. And I, I totally appreciate how hard my staff works to help me. And I just hope there's just so many things to get done. I hope I have the opportunity to help. Perfect, great. I did want to ask you actually one more question, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, you know, you, you brought up COVID, and that's the forefront of, front of everybody's mind. I wanted to get your thoughts on how we're going to, to help that, you know, people who are struggling, particularly in your district, because East Springfield, that are struggling amidst this with job losses and things like that. What's your plan to help with that problem? Um, Okay, so I've done, gone at this from every direction that I can think of. First of all, I think our biggest crisis was in getting equipment. So I was constantly reaching out to the governor to try to get more equipment, PP for our community. But from there, it's rolled over into the bigger picture now and the bigger problem, which is unemployment. I, ha I make calls constantly. I've hired two extra staff to help uh, get through any wrinkles that we have with the unemployment. And I would say that that has probably been my biggest uh, piece of this puzzle was to help with that. But I've had job fairs every year trying to help people get jobs. I know the governor just announced uh, today um, that we're going to try to help people in my community get jobs by helping them get a job that's actually COVID related to make up for a job that they've maybe lost.